Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're going to be setting up a Ubiquity Edge Router X, model number ERX, for use with Starlink. Now, this is a great little router to use for Starlink because it can certainly process plenty of packets, way more than Starlink will ever be able to actually push through this device, and it's relatively cost effective. The MSRP on the Edge Router X is 59 bucks, but I've seen them on sale sometimes for as low as like 35 bucks. So setting up the Edge Router X for use with Starlink is essentially just like setting up the Edge Router X for use with any internet connection, except there's going to be a couple of special considerations that we'll talk about as part of this video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in and get this Edge Router X factory reset so that we can start configuring it for use with our Starlink satellite dish. To factory reset the device, I am just holding a paper clip in the little reset hole for 10 seconds, and then we are going to release that, and the device will essentially factory reset and reboot. Upon first setting up the Edge Router X, you wanna plug directly into ETH0, or this port on, if you're looking at the front of the device, it's on the far left, and it says ETH0 slash P-O-E in, and I have that connected over to my laptop, which we're gonna take a look at next. At a factory default state, the IP address for the Edge Router X is 192.168.1.1. So the first thing that we need to do is configure our computer, our laptop here, in that same network. So you can see down here in the bottom right that I have no, I have airplane mode turned on. So I'm not using any sort of wireless whatsoever. I'm gonna open network and internet settings by right clicking on the network settings down in the system tray. And then we're gonna select change adapter options. From here, I'm gonna find my ethernet adapter. I'm gonna right click on it, choose properties. And then I wanna double click on internet protocol version four or TCP IP v4. And then we're gonna assign any address in 192.168.1 uh, other than one, right? So you can do anything between 192.168.1.2 all the way up to .254. We're just gonna do 192.168.1.2. And then for the gateway, we can say 192.168.1.1. And we really don't need any sort of DNS servers, or anything like that, uh, because we're gonna change all of this before we actually have internet access. All right, so just say okay, okay. And now let's open up our browser and point it to 192.168.1.1. Here we go, your connection is not private. We're gonna click advanced and proceed anyway. And the default username and password for the Edge Router X is going to be UBNT and UBNT. And the first thing we see here is router is in default config. Do you wanna start with the basic setup wizard? I'm gonna say yes. And then I'm gonna choose this one here that says WAN plus two LAN two. And so for internet, we're gonna put internet on ETH zero. That's perfectly fine for our purposes. We don't need to change anything else in this section. And this next checkbox down here that says use only one LAN is basically saying we're gonna have our internet as port one or ETH zero on the Edge Router X. And then these other four ports are gonna be a switch, right? So they're all gonna be the same network and the IP address of the network switch is going to be essentially the gateway of the LAN for this Edge Router X. So you can see configure this section, we wanna open that up. And again, by default, you're gonna be on 192.168.1.1 uh, which is a class C network or a slash 24 network. You can see by the subnet mask 255, 255, 255.0. And that's fine. You can use 192.168.1, but every router in the world basically comes default with that subnet. So I like to change mine to something different uh, just to avoid any possible conflicts. So we're gonna change our subnet for this device to 192.168.42.1. Why 42? Why not? But you can make that anything you want, anywhere between 192.168.1.x all the way through 192.168.254.x. We're also gonna check the box to enable the DHCP server. Scroll down a little bit more, and right here, we wanna set the password for the UBNT user. You can also change the username if you don't wanna log in with user UBNT. In our case though, we're gonna leave the username the same, but we're gonna put in a strong password that we're gonna remember. Now we can click apply, 
apply changes and it says the configuration has been applied successfully and now we want to reboot the edge router x so we're going to click reboot and yes i'm sure okay so now that we are rebooting this is our wan connection right starlink is going to go into eth0 so we need to unplug ourselves from eth0 and plug into eth1 or one of these other ports really doesn't matter now we also want to take our starlink connection which i have coming through port 5 of this switch over here but this is essentially the same as if you took the white cable that's normally plugged into the starlink uh, included wireless router and then plugged it into eth0 of this device instead okay so starlink has been plugged into eth0 my computer has been plugged into eth1 back at the browser i now need to change the ip address that i'm connecting to because i changed the ip address of the subnet that we set up as the lan for the edge router x so first i need to come down here I'm gonna open internet and network settings again. We're gonna click change adapter options. And remember, I left the box checked to set up a DHCP server. So I should automatically receive an IP address from the onboard DHCP server uh, on the Edge Router X. So we're just gonna right click here, properties, double click IPv4, and we're just gonna say obtain IP address automatically and obtain DNS server address automatically. We're gonna click okay and okay. And now we are connected, not just connected, but I believe we now have internet access already. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, let's ping the gateway of the Edge Router X, which is 192.168.42.1. Yes, we have access there. Let's ping an internet address, 1.1.1.1. This is a Google DNS server, and we have internet there. So we're basically set up, but we still need to dial in a few things. So let's get logged back into the Edge Router X and we will follow next steps from here. Now remember that we changed the IP address that we were connecting to. Originally, when it was factory default, we were connecting to 192.168.1.1, but we changed the subnet to 42.1. So we now wanna to connect to 192.168.42.1. And so we'll put that in our browser and we are now back into the Edge Router X. Log in with UBNT and the password that you set up during the wizard. And here we go. Now inside this interface, we can now see that we already have an IP address for ETH0. This is the CG NAT IP address for Starlink. So that's perfect. We know that we're working on the WAN. Uh, let's click system in the bottom left hand corner. And then let's just give this Edge Router X a couple of name servers that can be used as backups here. So we're gonna say 1.1.1.1 and we'll give it a second one of, you know, 9.9.9.9. Go ahead and save those settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and close the system tray here. And let's check out our DHCP server settings. So we're gonna come over here to services, DHCP server. We can see that we have a LAN DHCP server. So we're going to view the details and by default, it sets up these really weird addresses for DHCP. It gives us a DHCP pool of uh, 192.168.42.38 through 243, which is just an odd sort of DHCP pool. So I like to change that to 100 to 254. If you have a Unify controller, you can put the IP address of the Unify controller here to make it easier for your devices to discover that Unify controller. That's especially helpful if you have a Unify controller hosted in the cloud. And then we have a DNS server of the Edge Router X as the only DNS server that we're handing out for our clients. So we actually wanna add a backup DNS server as well. And I'm just gonna add 1.1.1.1. And then we're gonna click save. One consideration when you are creating the subnet during the wizard, you do not want to use 192.168.100.x. Reason being is that Starlink uses 192.168.100.x for its LAN. So we're gonna be putting a static route to 192.168.100.1 here in just a second. And if you have a 192.168.100 subnet, that static route won't work. Okay, so closing down the DHCP server, let's add that static route for Starlink. So right now, if we wanted to check out our Starlink statistics or go into the interface to stow the dish or open a support ticket or anything like that, 
We cannot do that. If I bring up 192.168.100.1, it's gonna go nowhere. Let's try that right now. So here we can see it says site can't be reached. We don't know, the, the edge router X doesn't know where to go when we're saying, hey, go to 192.168.1. So we need to add a static route for that. Back in the edge router interface, we're gonna click on routing. And then on the routes tab, we're gonna click add static route. The route type that we wanna add is an interface route, basically saying anything going out this interface uh, or, or you know, to get to this destination, go out this interface. And the destination network is just a single IP address. It's 192.168.100.1 slash 32. So slash 32 means just that one IP address. The next hop interface is going to be ETH0 because we want to get out our WAN to the Starlink satellite dish. For description, we can just say Starlink or whatever you want. And then for distance, just put one. And we're going to save that static route. And you can see it was added right here, the Starlink static route. Let's go ahead and try to get to 192.168.100.1 again. And here we go. We can see you're connected. So if we run a speed test from here, there we can see at the moment I'm getting about, looks like about 80 to 85 megabits per second out of the Starlink satellite dish. Okay, there you have it. There's nothing more to it. We are now set up to use the Starlink, Starlink satellite dish with an Edge Router X as our main firewall uh, router in the network. Now from here, I'm of course plugged directly into one of these ports, but now you can fan this out to other devices such as your access points to create your own internal wireless uh, you know, Wi-Fi network that is also using Starlink. You can plug it over to a switch and then any devices plugged into that switch will be able to take advantage of the Starlink internet connection. Yeah, really cool. And this is just so nice and portable. Once Starlink goes portable where you can actually put it on top of your RV or, you know, bring it camping with you or whatever you want to do, uh, having a nice little third party router like this is going to be is going to be pretty sweet because it's just so compact. It's easy to move around. And, uh, and really simple to set up as well. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.